first was Megalosaurus. When Iguanodon was first discovered, scientists weren't sure where to place the bony spike found with its skeleton. At first, they thought it was a nose horn, but when more complete skeletons were found, they realized it was actually a thumb spike. The first fossils of Iguanodon identified were of its teeth, which resembled those of an iguana. In fact, Iguanodon means Iguana Tooth. Iguanodon lived more than 125 million years ago and plodded along on four legs, but it could also walk and run on two legs. It may have used its hands to bring branches close to its beak, which was ideal for snipping up plants. Its thumb spike might have been used to open fruits or to defend itself from predators. So here we have an illustration of what an iguanodon may have looked like. It has some darker coloring on its back. And here it's featured as a light brown or tan colored dinosaur and the beak and its mouth. Iguanodon, Cretaceous period, Europe. This fossil of the bones of Iguanodon's hand shows the thumb spike on the right. So we have what would have been the thumb spike here. And then the finger bones. Sodacosaurus. Sodacosaurus means parrot lizard, and when you look at the dinosaur's beak, you can see why. Its distinctive curved bill could be used like a pair of scissors to snip off leaves to eat and its sharp-edged teeth shred them into pieces. Stones found in Sodacosaurus's stomach were probably gastroliths, which mashed up any extra tough plants and helped digestion. This dinosaur was covered in scales, but the top of Sodacosaurus's tail had an unusual brush of quills perhaps for showing off to mates. Scientists studying remains of Sodacosaurus's skin have discovered that it was darker on top and lighter underneath, which may have helped it to hide in its forest home. Although Sodacosaurus only had two small cheek horns and no frill, it was a ceratopsian and closely related to dinosaurs, such as Triceratops. So here we have an illustration with the quills that look very similar to a porcupine's on its tail. Its head looks very tortoise-shaped. Its little hands and feet. Sotacosaurus, Cretaceous period, Asia. About 120 million years old, this fossil from China shows a complete Sotacosaurus skeleton. So it's still in the rock where it was discovered. So we have the long tail, curved 
First glance, you might think Confucius Ornus was like any other bird, but this 125 million year old animal still had some features of its dinosaur ancestors. Although it was covered in feathers and had large wings, Confucius Ornus also had curved claws on its fingers, which might have helped it to climb among branches. The shape of its skeleton suggests Confucius soreness could fly, but it is not certain how far it could travel. Some Confucius soreness fossils have long tail feathers, and it is thought these are males. One fossil without long tail feathers was found to contain a special type of bone only found in female birds before they lay eggs. This suggests that male and female Confucius soreness looked different, like many male and female birds today. Confucius soreness was the first bird discovered with a toothless beak. They look rather like a sparrow or a cardinal markings on their face. to be the male because they have more bright plumage and a long tail. Confucius Ornus, Cretaceous Period, Asia. This fossil shows the outline of Confucius Ornus's feathers. The lack of long tail feathers suggests this is a female. So we have the outline. of what I would say must be the wings with a body which is pretty fascinating and then you have the bones that have fossilized so those long fingers like birds and pterosaurs had so long back Ornithopods such as Mutaburosaurus had big stomachs and long intestines to help them digest tough plants. Mutaburosaurus was first discovered in 1963 near the town of you guessed it, Mutaburra in Northeast Australia. It was an ornithopod, like Iguanodon, and it jumped on plants such as ferns and conifers around 110 million years ago. This dinosaur's most unusual feature was the bony lump on its snout. It is thought that it was attached to an inflatable sack that Mutaburosaurus could blow air into. Why would a dinosaur need a balloon on its nose? The male hooded seal, which exists today, might give us a clue 
it has a similar feature on its nose, which it uses to make sounds and to show off. Perhaps Mutaburosaurus used its snout in the same way. Mutaburosaurus, Cretaceous period, Oceania. Mutaburosaurus could walk on either two or four legs. The feet. To the hips. In the tail, vertebra. In the ribs. In the shoulders. ago. 
dinosaurs became extinct. The flowers of early magnolias formed big bowl shapes with large petals, known as tea bowls. At their center, they had a cluster of pollen-producing stamens that attracted pollen-eating beetles. Magnolia flowers had to be tough enough not to be damaged by the hungry beetles, but these insects did the important job of pollinating the flowers so the plant could make seeds. Unlike the soft blooms, the smooth-edged leaves of magnolias are often found as fossils. They look amazingly similar to the leaves of modern magnolias. DNA has been successfully removed from a fossil magnolia leaf around 20 million years old. That's pretty fascinating. It always blows my mind when they say they can remove DNA from things so old. Magnolia from the Cretaceous period to present worldwide. The magnolia leaf from the Cretaceous still clearly shows its central stem and pointed end. Spinosaurus hunted for prey on land and in the water. So here it's long snout like a crocodile. The sail on its back and down. Its long tail. And then its feet and claws. Lots of teeth. You'd have to be careful going for a swim during the Cretaceous period. Spinosaurus was a terrifying predator that lived in Africa almost 100 million years ago, and it could hunt in the water. It was the biggest meat-eating dinosaur to exist, longer even than a Tyrannosaurus, and it had strong arms and a paddle-like tail that might have helped push it through rivers. A long snout filled with pointed teeth and large curved claws were perfect for catching prey which were most likely large fish. A tall sail along its spine made Spinosaurus look even more enormous. This might have helped to control its body temperature or been brightly colored to show off to other Spinosaurus. We have Spinosaurus from the Cretaceous period in Africa. The smooth conical shape of a Spinosaurus tooth was perfect for piercing rather than cutting. So here we have the long tooth. Elasmosaurus. Elasmosaurus's neck was more than half of its body length. Wow, look how long this thing was. Elasmosaurus had a mouthful of needle-like teeth, perfect for snaring fish. Look at all these long, long neck and head. Lots of sharp illustration of what it maybe looked like. I like how it's poking on it. With its enormously long neck and small head, the sea reptile, the Lasmosaurus, was nothing like any animal alive today. Its neck contained around 70 bones, whereas its tail just 18. When
when it was first reconstructed, Elasmosaurus's head was accidentally placed on its tail. Scientists aren't certain how much Elasmosaurus could move its giant neck, but it may have used it to pick up prey from the seafloor or to lunge at schools of fish. Elasmosaurus lived around 80 million years ago and swam with four paddle-like limbs. Like other plesiosaurs, it gave birth to live young, as it would have struggled to get itself onto land to lay its eggs.
Mosasaurs looking for dinner. Archelon lived 75 million years ago and used its huge flippers to paddle through the ocean. It hunted in shallow water, searching for prey on the seafloor. A distinctive hook-like upper beak must have been handy for tearing up soft-bodied prey, such as jellyfish, or crunching into shelled invertebrates, such as ammonites. To lay its eggs, Archelon probably had to heave its huge body onto shore so it could dig a nest in the sand. Styracosaurus boasted one of the most elaborate neck frills of any dinosaur. An array of large and small spikes stuck out of the frill, which may have been brightly colored to help Styracosaurus attract a mate. This dinosaur also had sharp horns jutting out of each cheek and an enormous nose horn that could grow to 24 inches or 60 centimeters long. Styracosaurus's collection of horns was probably used as a defense against predators. Large bone beds, areas filled with fossils, suggest that Styracosaurus lived in large herds around 75 million years ago. It inhabited open plains and had a strong beak and teeth for cutting and slicing through vegetation, such as palms and cycads. Some spikes on Styracosaurus's frill were almost as long as its nose horn. The fan of spikes on Styracosaurus's frill gave it its name, which means spiked lizard. This is from North America. It looks rather like one of those masks you would wear to a party. <laughs> that giant Frills you can see in the bony horns. Large eye openings. And then I'm assuming well, this would be the place where the beak to its jaw. first discovered, it was found close to a nest of eggs. This inspired its name, which means egg thief. However, scientists now know that the dinosaur wasn't trying to eat the eggs, but instead to protect them. Ovaraptor arranged its eggs in a circle around the nest, with a gap in the middle for them to sit, and spread its fluffy feathers over the eggs to keep them warm. Ovaraptor hunted for food in sandy deserts around 75 million years ago. The discovery of a half-digested lizard inside a close relative of Ovaraptor suggests that it ate meat, but it may have eaten nuts and seeds as well. So here's an actual fossilized egg found in Asia. Many Edmontosaurus bones show bite marks, probably made by Tyrannosaurus. So here we have a little striped Edmontosaurus, the kind of duck bill looking mouth. Cretaceous. 
Instantly recognize. 
Tyrannosaurus is probably the most famous dinosaur, reaching up to 43 feet or 13 meters long. It was among the biggest predators to ever live. Tyrannosaurus stomped around the forests of Cretaceous North America around 68 million years ago looking for food. This dinosaur's fearsome teeth were capable of chomping huge mouthfuls of meat, the equivalent of 4,000 sausages in one bite, and even splitting apart bones. Many herbivorous dinosaur fossils show Tyrannosaurus bite marks, but broken and healed Tyrannosaurus bones show that sometimes its prey fought back. An easier meal for hungry Tyrannosaurus was to scavenge food left behind by other predators. This is from North America. This gigantic jaws and those humongous teeth. They'd make quick work of us, wouldn't it? Little, little protrusions off the vertebra. Maybe we'll call that for today. And then maybe next time we do another one, we can cover the Cenozoic era.